to talk about that. How have you compiled so many positive reviews? How, what has been your system of action in order to, to ask for those reviews or to attain them? So there are two answers. One of them is a lie. I'm just <laughs> wonderful and everything is amazing and it just like, blows people's mind and just they can't wait to do it by themselves. The other thing is I do have a wonderful IT person who when people come and check in uh, on their waiver, ask, is it okay to contact them about their experience? And he sends them an email and says, hey, how would you rate us from one to five stars? If it is five stars, it automatically goes to Google and nice. puts up a five star review. If it's anything less than that, it lets me know and then I can uh, get in touch with these people and say, hey, what's going on? What happened? What could have we, we done better? You know, tell us one thing that makes this an amazing experience. And usually they're reasonable. Usually I say, I don't know, just I wish you had more options of you know, national beers. I know you're stuck with craft beer because you're in Riverside and you're supporting other small business, uh, businesses, but I just like Bud Light. Okay. Okay. You know what? I can, I can add Bud Light to yeah. it. We have fridge space, you know, I'll try to talk people out of it once they get there because the local light lager is just as good, if not right. better as Bud Light, but I'll have it there. So it is the five-star reviews. Again, it, it is structure that I got help from. I didn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the fact. I knew that was important to reach to your customers and see how their experience was. But again, I have somebody on my team that helps me out with some things, and they do do it better and faster and cheaper than yeah. I do. So I've reached out to somebody, and yes, most of my five-star reviews are from people who just had such a phenomenal experience. And I'll get them as they're walking out. It's like, oh my God, we had a, had a good time. You know what means a lot to a small business? If you get a chance to review us, let your friends know how good it was. And I'll have people who's like, yes, I'm doing it right now. I, I can't wait here. Let's take a picture together around here. Yeah. And let's post it and let everybody know what a good time I've had. A lot of those are that. But a lot of that is a strategy as well. Because mm -hmm. I know that... If you look me up and you look up another place, they might be closer, they might be cheaper, they might be something, but then I'm recommended by over 200 people yeah. that, the same thing. So we all crowdsource our decisions. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna order something online that I need and I might pay a couple of bucks more if there are 200 reviews that are saying I bought this yeah. I'm a real person look at me with the item in his hands and I really like it or I want to find out why they didn't like it and I can kind of weigh my decision out but yeah crowdsourcing a lot of things just like your decisions on where you're going to take your next date to mm -hmm. is going to depend a lot on those reviews and we've put a lot of effort into it. I think that's brilliant and the fact that you have all those reviews is it's it's awesome and if you are not set up where you've got Facebook reviews or Google My Business reviews, because Google My Business is what we're talking about yeah. here. I, I've, I just closed a house last Friday from a call that I got off of Google My Business. It, it, uh, it was a Navy gentleman who was moving to Okinawa, Japan on orders, and he called me and said, hey, and, and the statistics are, it's like 75% of people go with the first realtor that they talk to. Yeah. So he tells me, hey, I was referred to two different realtors. I work with one, but I wanted to do my own research and I did my Googling and I found you and I wanted you, I want, I want to meet with you. This was like back in July. So I think this was, today's October 17th. So it was like October 10th or something like that. Somewhere in that range that we closed. Yeah. So calls me, I go out to his house a couple months back and interviewed and said, look, you know, I, I can help you. Here's how I can help you. Here's the process. This is what it looks like. You know, these are the things that other agents should be telling you. I encourage you, interview them, have them come over, have them point out latent defects that they might be able to see. Because I flip houses, I've got that experience, so mm -hmm. I can point out, hey, you know, maybe this might be a concern. These are things we don't want to paint this, maybe give a concession for it. So let's see if these realtors give you that same insight. And I ended up getting the listing. And so you have your network of people that you can recommend. Hey, this might need of a course. little fix, but I know a person that's yep. going to do it. That's what separates you from being a commodity to being a partner. It's a resource. Just, yes. You've got to be a resource. In the last episode with, with Gonzo, uh, episode 16, we, we talked about that too. Being a resource for people, it's huge. 
You got to be a resource. If, if you can be a resource, you can be lasting. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's very important. Anybody, anybody can show you around a house. I like, I don't need you to unlock the door for me. This is the kitchen. Yeah. This is the bathroom. You're probably going to. The walls are, are beige. Look at that. Look, look, would you just yeah. look at it? Anybody can do that, <laughs> but it just takes a little extra to be extraordinary. Yeah, it be takes knowledgeable. a little bit extra to put effort into it and see, again, we were talking about having that empathy, uh, empathy, I can't pronounce empathy, <laughs> uh, having that empathy and being able to look at it from the other person's point of view. What do they really want? They don't want you to unlock the door. They want you to paint a picture. What is it? Live, what's it going to be yeah. to live here? What's it going to be to have to take care of the things that have to take care of? The, what's it going to be to have to find people to that? And then you solve their problems before they can even run into them. For sure. And it can be a real estate agent or it can be anything that you're interested in. Put yourself in the shoes of your customer and to see what they're really trying to take care of. Are they buying a house because they want to have a good nightlife? Are they buying a house because, you know, they have kids and they want good schools? You, If you can get ahead of what mm -hmm. their true needs are, nobody wants a beige room. Nobody wants, you know, granite countertops. People want a feeling of something. Right. And you, if you, the more you can connect with them, the more you can empathize with them, the, the better you're going to be at than 90% of people that are in your industry. It's true, it's true. It's about a consultative approach. Understand your customer's needs, what they're looking for. And a lot of people, especially when you start a new business, a lot of times, unless you've got some serious deep pockets from something else, maybe you've had a salary, maybe you had a savings, you've had an inheritance, you've got some big line of credit. There, there are ways to start your own small business with a nest egg of capital. A lot of entrepreneurs start out though without a large nest egg of capital, without understanding business credit and leverage and, and how to work with private investors or how to go to banks the most efficiently. These are all things that we've got to learn a lot of times from, from the ground floor. Yeah. So as you put these things together, I think a lot of people start out in a mode of survival mode. They're hungry for cash and it's it's more about them and their needs. You're bootstrapping. Yeah. And there, there's a balance point there. You've, you've got to be you do have to look out for yourself, but you also have to take care of the people that you're working with. Because now, especially with the technology era and the fact that people can look you up and look at your reviews, it is, uh, there's, a, a, I don't remember who quoted this, but it was essentially, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation and a day to ruin it. So operate with integrity, do the right thing by other people, understand their needs and understand that not every customer is the right fit for you. Great book, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Phenomenal book about how to get out of survival mode and how to understand how to not get into survival mode when it comes down to cash flow and taking on too much. That book was an epiphany for me. I had a mental breakdown in the middle of that book because I was like doing so many things in the world of real estate. And I was like, I can help you buy a house. I can help you get the money. I can help you fix it with my general construction company. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it was too much. I had a mental breakdown because I was doing way too much. Yeah. And that, that book helped me identify what things I needed to push off my plate and, and where I was going wrong not building some of the right systems in my operations. So it's a good book too. But very true that people will just start out and take on any opportunity and do whatever they need, they feel like they need to do to make a buck. And that is going to not take you very far most of the time. I've done a few interviews, but I never had a feeling that I am going to re-listen to that interview and take notes from. <laughs> from <like, laughs> part of me is just like going for my phone to add to the audible list. Most of the time, don't I would love to sit down and read. Um, it's getting to the point where I don't have the attention mm -hmm. to read anymore. Something I want to work on. Uh, some dopamine detox, but um, Audible is my friend. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're talking, and I'm trying like to be a good, <laughs> good uh, interviewee, and not go on my phone and just add things to. Oh, it. I, I remember all the books yep. I, I referenced. So when this is over, I'll tell you. I'll yeah, re-listen. I'll re-listen to the whole thing myself. Yeah. I've never done that before. Listen to my own interview. They're fun. I so at the end of all of these, I actually personally do all the meta tags. So that way I'm able to get a task done, but also listen to these in case there is anything crazy or something needs to be edited. Oh, yeah. Then I can go back through since these are all pre-recorded. Um, 
but that's kind of my way of being able to go back and listen to it and be efficient at the same time because I'm always taking notes with the meta tags and then yeah. writing the things that are that are the key highlights of it all. So it's fun to go back and, and watch love, these. I love seeing how much fun you are having with it. It's fun, and, it and it's because, yeah, I get a chance to throw my own little plugs in there, but yeah. it's more it's mostly about you and the people that are listening because yeah. I don't think from a philosophical standpoint – and some of this goes back into building a story brand is the philosophical issues. And I'm very driven on principles and philosophy. So it's like there's not very much education out there for entrepreneurs. And I have lost 10, I've lost over six figures, getting screwed out of contracts, making the wrong choices, not doing the right thing because I didn't know because I wasn't taught this stuff in grade school. So I am passionate about giving people the opportunity to learn and to grow and to not make some of the same mistakes that have been super, super hard, that have kept me up, that have had me in a fetal position crying. <laughs> I mean, I've dealt yeah. with it. I've dealt with a lot of it, and it's not fun. And if there's a way to help other people not go through that, and especially by sharing other individuals who are out here taking risks, you, you have a good heart, you want things to work for yourself and for those that you're serving, that's what I want to highlight, is that there are good people there are opportunities in this world, and it's about taking initiative and taking action and developing the right mindset that you need in order to be successful because it's both. It's the internal. It's your thoughts. It's how you take care of yourself. It's it's your positive mindset or their otherwise, which will serve you or not. And then it's also your external and taking action because you can take all the action you want and have a bad mindset, and sometimes it might not materialize in the way you want it to. Sometimes yeah. you can take... You can have the best mindset you want, but if you don't take the action, so it's the balance point. It's the marriage of those two philosophies. Yes. And that's why I started this podcast was to give that education. And again, there's some marketing for me and building the hedge fund was a big reason why we got the, the podcast off the ground was at the discretion of a mentor who said, hey, I was able to build my business by starting a podcast. I highly recommend you do the same thing. And then I found something in an area where I'm passionate about and realized how I could make it all come full circle. And that's what's great about businesses. You can create full circle businesses because my plan is to be mega wealthy so I can give it away and donate it and create funds and loan people money that are starting small businesses. I just want to use my money to be a resource and help other people. That's my whole goal. Yeah, and it definitely feels good to be able to do that. Yeah. At, at any level, whatever it is. If you if you go out with a friend and you pick up the check, or if you go out and you know have this sizable gift to somebody that you care about, it just feels good to be able to be at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and my my level of where I want to go, maybe it's not the most practical, and not everybody has that same level of, of drive and ambition, or or not even drive and ambition, but just want. Yeah, you know, I think what it boils down to is having the things that you want, having the life that you want, and having the level of achievement that you specifically want because everybody is different. We're all different. Not everybody wants to start an yeah. axe throwing company. Not everybody wants to start a podcast. Not everybody wants to listen to a podcast. So, I mean, it's like you have to find what works for you and you also have to be real and accountable when you find that something's not working for you. I've met a lot of serial entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who've gotten into whatever it was at that time for a certain reason whether it's just to make money, whether it's just to get out of the old job, or whether it's just to do good for everybody else. And with every experience, you have new things that you learn, and you are forming your why, and you're forming how, where. So everything kind of comes together, and it may not be like the 30-day challenge might have not been a success, but it was definitely a good lesson. It was definitely a good acquisition of tools. It was definitely in the right path of overall schemes. So go for it. First entrepreneurial thing that I did, I was six years old and um, I was uh, picking flowers for my grandmother's garden and selling them uh, um, on the at the town square from a bucket. Oh wow, that's cool. Yep, bought some uh, books that I like to read. Mm -hmm. I've. I've had more cash than anybody growing up and all of the rich kids that uh, were in my school, I was never given an allowance. I would flip, I would sell, I would trade, I would make things happen. No, you're a hustler. It, I think it was ingrained somehow. I don't know. I was lucky not to be given anything. I, I liked get, going after it. I had a few mentors, I had a few good examples. and. Uh, I, 
I would make things happen. I don't care what it was. Set my mind to it and find a way to get it done. Mm -hmm. Or learn from it. Beat my head against the wall for a while and figure out how to do it better next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It starts to hurt when you bang your head against the wall enough times. But then you realize why. And again, we've said it so many times. It's just so much fun. I can't see myself doing anything else. I. Some people, my mom enjoys her years of years of pushing papers around at her desk the chair is cozy the ac's on and she's you know her feet are not sore that's great mm -hmm. i admire her for it i'm gonna hire a lot of people like her to do the things for me i i couldn't do it and, and i think it's wonderful that everybody's gonna find their calling whatever it is mm -hmm. yeah the opportunity is there that's where ikigai is a big way to help you find that calling if you've got questions about how you can utilize the drive that's within you because we, we take aptitude tests in grade school I think I talked about this before I was like a veterinarian a funeral director and then there was something else but it's like why why would those be good skills for me not the end result but the the internal and I think it's important for any of you that are wanting to start a small business or if you if you have a small business and that maybe you're losing steam with you know, I think it's really amazing that you're so passionate about your business, you don't mind sending a text at 1 o'clock in the morning. From the from the coaching side and real estate, sometimes I will. And, and I, I think I've got some PTSD from making myself too available at certain points. And I hit a, a burnout. So I, yeah. there's a part of me where I'm like, I, I have my window of time where I'm available. And then I'm like a corporate business where it's up to me if I decide to respond to you or not. But, but that's also, hold on, so I'm somewhat available throughout the day, but you have things that you block out and you're, so that's just being more organized. That's not deciding when not to be available. That's just portioning out your day. It's like, okay, this is my super productive time where I'm focused on these things that I have to do. This is my leisure time and this is my time where I'm communicating with mm -hmm. people. I don't have that. Everything throughout the day from the moment where I wake up at 5 a.m. to the moment, moment where I go to bed at midnight, everything is just throughout the day. So it works for me for right now. If I learn from you how to get things better and if I learn to schedule and organize my day better for my own health and for the better way of my customers doing business with me, that might be something that I change again. Yeah, boundaries so, and hard yeah. scheduling. That's what it boils down to. It's it's creating boundaries for yourself and hard scheduling times where you're committed to certain activities and then having those boundaries. And then you it's up to you. This is a beautiful part of boundaries. You create them. You can allow people to overstep them when you so choose. But it's what, what happens sometimes is we have no boundaries in force. Then we get stepped all over all the time. And then you hit a point where it's like, ah. And you feel exhausted. Ah. And that's yeah. that burnout. That's yes. the thing. Yeah. Yes. I'm not feeling that yet. I can see myself on a path for that probably, but I'm not feeling it. it it's still fun. Yeah. It's still, you know, it's still exciting to see. Uh, I see somebody on a calendar, you know, there's an appointment coming up in an hour. I'm like, I wonder what this will be. You yeah, know? yeah. Is this just a group of friends that finally talked each other into it? Is this somebody trying to impress someone to show them? Uh, one of the best things is when girls come in a day before their appointment uh, with their booking with the new guy just to practice a little bit but promise uh, uh, I have to promise them that they were never here before and tomorrow <laughs> is going to be the first time that's wild that that happens that's true that's that's interesting yeah when a girl tells you it's her first time axe throwing the don't don't believe her. <laughs> is, is it a lot of times you've seen that? All the time. Wow, like that's weekly. crazy. Weekly. That's crazy. We have repeat offenders also, and it's hilarious. <laughs> like they're going on dates with multiple guys here? They are going on the dates with multiple guys, and usually they have a type. They're bigger, burlier guys, mm -hmm. you know. And those guys lose it when they see a petite woman beat them in axe throwing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it's fantastic. Like, I, I have to step away because I want to laugh, but I can't. Yeah, you won't get any five-star reviews that way. Oh, <laughs> she, she usually schedules everything. And usually, funny enough, again, it is women that are looking for new experiences. One of the things that um, the marketing guru from SCORE got wrong about axe throwing is that he thinks my target market is the guys 
uh, burly men in the 20s and 30s. And I had to tell him that it's usually women who are out there looking for new experiences, looking for new things to do, looking for memorable things. Most of my appointments are actually made by women, whether it's somebody's wife or somebody's girlfriend who wants something new yeah. and exciting, wants the courtship again and wants the fun dates. Men, don't forget this is Corey Wayne. You must always court your woman or another man will. It doesn't matter if you're five weeks in, five months in, five years in, five decades in. I'll be the other man. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I've, it's, I've seen it a lot. you got to make sure you continuously take her on exciting dates. And if you're in Jacksonville, Florida, then take her over to Axe Champs because it's an exciting place to go. And obviously... The ladies like it. So for a moment, I thought you were talking to somebody specific. I'm talking to everybody listening. <laughs> <laughs> we had a conversation earlier about <laughs> just keeping a spark alive and keeping things going, keeping, you know, the good balance. Again, going back to that, why did you get into it? Why did you get started? Whether it's a relationship or a business or a friendship or whatever it is that you start seeing some issues with. Think about why. Think mm-hmm. about why did you originally get into this? Why why this and not that? Why, what was your first passion about it? And uh, it helps get through a lot of ruts. Yeah, it does. It does. And, and it helps, it helps you focus back on it. Again, look, whether you're at the gym and you're sweating and hurting and sore and things like that, you think back on focus back on why and how. Go back to the original basics. Go back to the blueprint, the plan. Yep. That's why it's there. No, nope, it's true. It's true. That's why you have to have a business plan, a marketing plan, and, and so many other things that we've summarized throughout this podcast. Because Are you going to write a relationship plan? What's that? Are okay. you going to write a relationship yes. plan? Yes. Yeah. So with Tilting the Balance, we've got a few different versions that we're going to expound upon some of the, the categories of life in a little bit more detail. And I think I'm about to take off with the, the business version and how to start your business from start to finish. And then what books to read as you go through those things. Because there's there's not very much stuff out there like that. So, And now that I put this out there for someone else to take the idea, I'm, I'm already a step ahead of you. So, <laughs> Love it. So Love I want to go back real quick before, before we wrap this up here. How you went from operating out of this trailer to operating in a commercial business and how you were able to put that together from did you have a mentor who helped you understand the commercial leasing process like how'd you go through that how did you get the capital that you needed how'd you end up finding the owner that was okay with what you needed and the insurance and all those things how did you formulate all of that from an idea from the trailer into an actual business the actual business was the end goal the actual well actually a franchise is the end Mm -hmm. goal uh, but um, the brick and mortar was, uh, the trailer was just a stepping stone towards it. Because again, like I said, you walk into and you're talking to commercial real estate agents or the owner of the property or anybody involved into that. And you tell them you want to start a business at this location. They want to see a track record. Right. They want to see you being a part of it. So kind of mobile setup of my business just like a lot of food trucks are doing it they would like to have a restaurant but let's dip our toes in it because it's a little bit more affordable so again i didn't have to deal with zoning or certificates of use (laughs) and certificates of god knows what all but (laughs) i set up the mobile i went through the legal process of that everything was legitimate on there the business was uh registered the tax the um, tax id number florida sales tax all of those things were kind of set up with that which again was a good way to break it up for me so I had a mobile, had that for about a year and a half. And for a year and a half, I was constantly looking for the opportunities. I was mm-hmm. constantly looking for things. And uh, I love this plug. But I finally learned to find a real estate agent. Like you buy houses and you go for look for real estate agents. Apparently starting a business at a commercial property. Same too, process. A real estate agent was so helpful. And um, I was able to find a wonderful real estate agent. Again, a friend of a friend. I didn't. I didn't look up, you know, the first place. It was just a referral. Mm-hmm. It was just 
mutual friends. You worked with the first the person networks. first. Networks. Yep. yep. The networks kind of connected between uh, us, found a wonderful person. And at the same time, it's funny to say, but luckily COVID happened and a lot of properties yeah. were closing down. So few of the same people that shut me down when I told them what I'm looking to start up didn't care as long as I put up a couple of months. Yeah, they needed uh, the cash uh, flow. They they just would they I could have opened anything I wanted at that time. That's really and interesting. When a lot of businesses business were closing. I was able to open up mine. Um, for, uh, again, at the same time, the lumber prices went up, so I went to a local small business. There's this guy in Middleburg who's got some wood in his backyard, who's got some saws and some uh, uh, things to, to cut him down with, and he cut up some lumber for me. I was able to use the local business that where the prices didn't go through the chain of mm-hmm. sales. It wasn't through the lumber company to a distributor to the retail store. It was, I went directly right. to the source. And again, I love being able to work with the small businesses, but this time it was just a lot more affordable too when you just go directly. For those that have no context, the lumber is for the targets. So that when you're throwing axes, for the full stars. construction, uh, oh, not gotcha, just the gotcha. targets, but even the lanes, uh, the gotcha. fences around, the backdrop, and everything. Basically, I was able to build out the entire venue gotcha, okay. from the local. Now we do use uh, the fresh uh, for the targets as well because freshly cut boards are easier to get the stuff to stick in. Mm-hmm. You don't want the old pressurized dry boards because they're just going to crack. How often do you have to change those boards? Number one question. Uh, Number two question is, um, does anybody get hurt? So to answer that, I used to uh, carry around little cards Uh that had the top three questions answered on them already. (laughs) I did kind of, uh, from my point, it was cool. Yeah, but from my point, it's cool, you know. But then it also started feeling as like, dude, everybody's asking this. Look, I already have the answer written down. So I stopped doing it. Like, even though I had fun with it, I didn't think it was a good customer experience. So I stopped doing it. But the answer is uh, every league night. So we have leagues and we have competitors and we put on fresh target boards with paint and fresh and things like that just because of the lines on bullseyes and other rings. We wouldn't have to change them once a week because, again, we get these custom boards. We spend a little bit more money. Another thing that I invest a little bit more on is the quality of the boards because not only that they last longer for me, but they're softer and uh, axes stick easier for the customers. Mm-hmm. So this is one of those things. There's just a win-win for everybody. You put in a little bit more money into your business and things last a little bit longer and your customers like the quality of what you're doing. So we started off with that, got the local uh, lumber yard. And uh, then during COVID, one of the negative things is that the city government was just taking months to approve things that take days. Back to that certificate of use, never finished that one. Um, I go in and I submit three copies of 54 page package application. So one application is 54 pages. They asked me to copy that three times and submit it in. So I did. The certificate of use, they tell me it takes about two weeks to process. I'm like, great. Two weeks later, I call them up and ask them, is this certificate? Because there were a few that I can print out online. Do you got to ship it to me? Is it something that I actually have to come pick up? And they tell me they don't have my application. I'm like, what do you mean? I was there two weeks ago. Oh, it's, it's just COVID. So the mail takes a little bit longer. I'm like, no, no, no. Mail doesn't have to do anything with this. I submitted it to you. It's like, yes, sir. You submitted it to the reception desk on the first floor. We're all the way on the second floor. It didn't get to us yet. So just like everybody says, like, did you ask them to bring it from the reception yeah. to the second floor? I did, and they're like, "No, no, we don't have a procedure for that. You can't, you can't do that right yeah, now." It's so, so just, difficult to get someone to walk up a flight of stairs or take an elevator. Well, it's not difficult. <laughs> it just usually it takes two weeks, but it was COVID, and yeah. you know, it took a little bit longer. Um, that was one of the things that was just. It, nobody could get me ready for you know any of the mentors or you know, talking to score or reading books or anything else like that inefficiency of bureaucracy is still by far the most frustrating thing that I ever had to deal with. That's in a lot of businesses too, especially construction, trying permits and all that. That's 
dealing with bureaucracies. If you're getting a nonprofit, you've got to go to the IRS. There, you've always got to understand that there can be. It's a great, great nugget. One of the bureaucracies. Things I want to give you a heads up. Just, <laughs> yeah. just be ready for it, and it's going to be worse than yeah. you think. It's going to be cost more. It's going to. Um, I was getting a beer and wine license, and uh, they wanted to make sure that there isn't a church within two miles of my location. Like, we're in Jacksonville, Florida. There's a church within yeah. two miles of every location. It's like, yeah, I know. So there's a process to go around this role. See, we're going to have you file exemption. I'm like, all right, how do we do that? It's like, you got to pay $750 for our surveyor to see, you know, if there's a church. I'm like, I'm telling you, there is. We can skip that. It's right across the street. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm looking at it through the window right now. As a matter of fact, you know, you can go to Google Maps and yeah. check things out. You don't need to 750. No, no, no. We have to send a survey. <laughs> so they send out a survey. So the survey can prove that I can't get a beer in my license so we can even get started on the exemption process. Fun. Fun, expensive, long. I mean, any kind of a business, whatever you're looking to do, whatever your entrepreneurial goals are, get ready for the bureaucracy, inefficiency. And so I got uh, went to my venue to finish up on some construction and I had a citation on a door. And all it says is not accepting the citation is a felony. So jump back into my, didn't even unlock the door, grab the citation notice and uh, jump into my uh, vehicle, go down to the city, and I'm like, I'm accepting, I'm accepting. Just just yeah. want to let you know, whatever Don't this me. is. Yeah, just so you guys know, you know, I'm complying. It's like, um, go to the citation uh, office on the seventh floor. I'm like, okay, I show up there. I'm like, guys, I have a citation for the lack of certificate of use, but it is being processed right now. Oh, then okay, you're fine. We just, uh, somebody was driving by and I saw that you put a sticker on the door that shows what the hours of operation are going to be. So we just assumed that you're open. So, you know, we gave you this uh, notice of pending uh, felony. I'm like, okay, (laughs) but how did you, I've put it on yesterday. How did you guys figure that out? It's like, oh, we're on the seventh floor. We issue citations. We work really, really fast. I'm like, can you get... Some of your guys down to the second floor, it's like, oh, no, then we wouldn't be <laughs> issuing that many citations if they worked really fast. It's just laughable. It's backwards. It's so backwards, and it's so true dealing with, with bureaucracies in, in your business. And I would say you got to make sure that your business passes the test. Is your business legal, number one? Yes. You're going to go to prison for, mm, for selling cut drugs? Cut. You know, don't cut. Are you going to be a pharmacist? You can save on your materials. You can save <laughs> on your expertise or whatever you want to save on. Don't save on things that can impact did, legality. Did you have to get a lawyer to get your waivers put together? No, no, no. The insurance company helped out with cool. that. That's so cool. Another thing is that insurance actually for something like an axe throwing business is very, very few insurance companies deal with it, but it's actually not that expensive at all. We've had the first accident venue was open in Toronto in 2007. We've had minimal amount of incidents. And what I mean by that is I've talked to my insurance broker mm-hmm. and they cover over 400 companies as a brokerage. And four years ago, they paid out a liability lawsuit uh, because somebody slipped and fell in a bathroom of wow. one of the venues. Over four years, over 400 venues. That was the only wow. incident that's on the record. That, that answers the second FAQ, huh? Of people getting hurt? Yes. Yep. And and that's my favorite thing is you have a much statistically better chance of getting hurt in a bowling alley yeah. than you do at the next throwing range. So a few things that my range does and every one of the ranges that is going through uh, the same brokerage, so at least half of them that I know in the world, um, you have to have a coach with every person. Your safety rules have to be clearly displayed to everybody uh, to see. You have to cut people off, even though some, even a lot of places don't even sell beer and wine. We do, mm-hmm. but two drinks is what we see when you walk through, and it's obvious that you haven't had any drinks. We'll cut you off at two. If we can, if we even doubt that you might have been drinking before you showed up there you're not going to be drinking here well it, and here's the thing i i want to make money i want to maximize my revenue with every single customer i want to upsell them there's a reason why i pay for the, uh, that license 
it's just not worth the risk. You want to stay in business too. Yeah. 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 It's that not, makes sense. I don't, I don't want to have a drunk person. And there's a difference. Like we joke about it. I have um, tumblers that say ax throwing and alcohol, what could go wrong? Because we hear it every day when we offer a beverage to somebody. And the thing is, nothing can go wrong. You can have a beer, you can have two beers, and uh, you can be perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, I uh, spoke to an Olympic coach who was telling me about the specific blood alcohol content that they've done through research that focus style sports are actually improved by. Hmm. So. You know, everybody thinks that a couple of drinks and they're better at pool, a couple of drinks and they're better at bowling. Nah. There is actually a golden point really? where you are better. You're just relaxed enough. You're not overthinking it. You're not too, right. too nervous about it and stuff like that. So there is a point where you are just relaxed enough, but your coordinate, hand-eye coordination, your motor functions are not impaired yet. Interesting. Well, yeah. see, that's the other bureaucracy saying, oh, we're going to pull you up. <laughs> yeah they don't they have a very 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 strict limit and there's yep. a reason for that too no I'm not saying that people, yeah. I'm not condoning drunk driving so I'll put that out there too I, it was more of a, a joke about you drink drink, not often yeah. no I don't care much for it anymore I used to drink all the time I grew up yeah. out in Tallahassee Florida State party town it's kind of lost its appeal I don't like the way it makes me feel I don't like waking up hungover the next day. Yeah. And within 24 to 72 hours, sometimes it'll make me feel a little bit depressed. It's just not, it doesn't work for the lifestyle that I want for myself. Yeah. And, and I've learned that as I've gone along, trial and error. And I, I do, every now and again, I'll, I'll have a drink. But right now, that's been part of my, my 30 day challenge is no alcohol, no substances at all. I just want to be 100% clear minded and be the best version of myself. Good. And, that's not to say that I won't go back to having a drink every now and again or doing something I enjoy, but yeah. for this staple in time, while well, I, I've got so many things going on, I just I need every last yeah. bit of yeah. clarity, even and, even a little bit of hangover the next morning. Just, just doesn't work for me. It yeah. yep, doesn't work. And, yeah. and you have a accountability buddy at the gym who would just be. Yeah, well, we don't we don't work out together. We just we just review our goals together. Oh, okay. So we set all of our goals together every week. Well, so for the thirty day challenge, we put all the goals, but then every week we'll have a. We actually, we've been meeting multiple times a week, going through the goals that we set for the week, making sure. So sometimes we'll set new goals in the week for like a personal task standpoint. Yeah. But the core of it is our beginning thirty day challenge, and then that way we're we're making sure that we're integrating all of our goals within that thirty days, so that at the end. We can say, hey, did you hit all your 30-day goals? Yes, no. And if you didn't, why not? And then we were reassessing it and then doing another 30 days from there. My gym buddy is a retired military police. Mm -hmm. And if I show up uh, to the gym at 6 a.m., I haven't slept fully and I've went out and had too much fun or something like that, he makes me regret it. Yep. He's... I help him with his workouts. We work around, again, he's got a couple of injuries and things. He's got a um, replaced uh, hip. And I help him out a lot with specific exercises that I've learned through my fitness journey. And then he keeps me on track because, man, he makes me regret if I show up to the gym or if I don't show up to the gym. But if I show up to the gym and I'm not full 100% to go, it's not fun. Yep. So, yeah. With, again, you gotta put your tribe. You gotta get your get your community your around. Your social you influences. Push each other. Push each your other. Social yeah. influences. Who's in your life? What kind of things are you listening to? Exposing yourself to? Who are the people in your lives, and how are they encouraging you or discouraging you? How are they supporting you or not supporting you? How are they showing up or not? You've got to do an inventory on the people in your world. These are all collective little puzzle pieces of the biggest picture. And it's so important to have the right people in your life and the, the people who, my, my buddy Nick said this the other day who I wrote the book with, he said, I only want to be around Ford thinkers. He's yeah. like, I'm hanging out with people that we're having progressive conversation. And and that's, that was a great way to summarize it. And that's where I'm at too. It's just, I just want to hang out with people that are doing something positive or aspiring towards something positive. I want to be a resource for those that are working to grow and to learn. And I want to be that way for my friends. I want to be that way for my family. 
I want to be that way for my romantic partners. I want to be that way for you as an audience. So that's, yeah. that's what I want to do for perfect for strangers. That was that was funny enough how we clicked during that dinner because we got a chance to hang out and throw at the venue. Then we went for a dinner. We're talking uh, to your friend, and they've got a goal of just being able to live out of the van in Europe next year. Yeah, They're working on uh, some things. I'm working. And the thing is, the entire conversation that evening was about a future, about the goals, right. about plans, about you know what we're all aspiring to be in in different industries and different things. You know, somebody is wanting to have musical aspirations and you know these people are traveling plans and I'm running businesses and you're doing a business podcast book everything that mm -hmm. you're doing and it's just like that's not what I'm doing I just like being around people who are getting after it right and it makes me more excited to do my stuff I don't want to hear about whatever People that I used to hang out with, all the drama, all the complaints, all the negativity, all the... It's always somebody else's fault. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Did you, every time somebody is negative, every time somebody is not where they want to be or just the, not even putting them, putting any goals in front of them, they're just day-to-day -day stuff like that. They're unhappy because of somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's the boss. It's the ex. It's the environment. It's the city. You know, it's too big or too small. Or for two different people are living in the same city and they're both negative. But one says the city is just too big. The other one wishes they lived in a different city. They have no goals of moving to a different city. Mm -hmm. But it's the city's fault. It's raining. It's something always external. It's never their fault. They're never. It's not that they don't have goals, they don't have energy, they don't have aspirations, they don't have anything else like, no, 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 it's, it's somebody else. It's so much easier to, for it to be somebody else's fault. Yep. It's, it's about perspective, perspective and about accountability. accountability. Yeah. You've got to be accountable. No. No. If you are not happy with circumstances in your life, you need to ask yourself why or how you are responsible and then start reverse engineering it from there. And that's hard. That's hard for a lot of people yeah. to, to be brutally honest and it's... Sometimes it, the truth hurts. Sometimes and the truth start hurts. With accountability, buddy. Yes. Yeah, start with, you know. But even then, to, to be accountable to an accountability buddy still takes a level of personal accountability and responsibility. That's what accountability is. It's about It's a personal sense of responsibility and how extreme you want to get with that. Like there's a, well, there's, there was something that was a book. There was a little clip where the guy was talking about his, he was walking with his girlfriend from a metaphor metaphorical standpoint she gets hit by a meteor and he's like how am i accountable for her getting hit by a meteor well maybe i could have done more research about meteors and how they hit the earth and more meteor prevention type of thing and it's like it's a little extreme yeah but you could you could go that deep into i still think it's kind of ridiculous like if someone gets hit by a meteor it's going to be difficult for you to have much control over that because there are natural disasters and, and just things that happen. One of my best friends from high school was, they, him and his dad were driving home and a tree fell on top of their car while they were driving and they both passed away in an accident. Well, in the, in the middle of a beautiful day. So I mean, just fell on top of them. So yeah, I know, right? I, I always give the disclaimer, don't hit the table because you can hear it. But in that point, the, the, I want the sound effect. So, <laughs> but, it's, but it's true. Like, There's certain things that you can't be accountable for, and that's that's another good, the, the yin and the yang, the, the 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 principles that are counterbalancing, because you do have to be accountable for you, and then you also have to learn how to not take accountability for other people's stuff, and then just keep moving forward. Yeah, and that's and that's that's a whole rabbit hole. We could talk for that about that for hours too. It is an extreme example, but it's also an example of trying to look for a solution. Mm -hmm. It's not you know that person did not you know, just fall into despair because while well, meteors hit, I'm never going to go walk with somebody else because they might get hit by a right. meteor again. So let me just stop. At least it's, it is extreme, but it is, Hey, what can I be doing? Mm -hmm. What can we, Hey, maybe we start hanging out indoors more. Maybe, you know, <laughs> I start planning out things and stuff like that. But, um, I like, I like it even though it is extreme. I got a funny comic that I read the other day. Um, it is a couple. Oh, and the name of the comic is "If you uh, if you don't pay attention to them, toddlers are indestructible." Okay. This couple is walking with their kid. The kid gets hit uh, hit by a meteor. 
and a kid really? is saying is something. It is a comic. The ki- a kid is say, uh, saying uh, something like, Daddy, look, I got hit by a meteor. And uh, that reminds himself that kids are indestructible if you're not making a big deal out of it. And goes like, yes, you did, buddy. Shake it off. Okay, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, though, that I'm talking about the meteor thing and then you just saw a comic yeah, it's But it was just a funny one. It's like, just shake it off, buddy. It's like, okay, dad. Got yeah. hit by a meteor. Okay. <laughs> yep. And that's what we have to learn how to do as as grown men, grown women is learn how to become a master of our emotions yeah. and shake things off when they happen because there are circumstances that are going to happen that are beyond our control and you cannot allow it to derail you from continuing to move forward to create the results that you so desire for yourself and i think that's where a lot of people have issues too is they don't have an idea of what results they want it's like well i want to go on a trip well, where do you want to go i don't know well okay you got to figure that out and then okay now you decide a destination Okay, well, how do you get there? Well, I don't know. So what's the fastest way to get there? Research yeah. what steps to take. Yeah. And then go, if, if, if you need to go north to get there, where are you going to go south? Unless maybe there's a, a more efficient way you can jump on an airplane by going an hour south and then flying up there. You never know. I mean, so you gotta, you got to look at that too. But what is the most efficient and effective way to get to where you want to go? And making that plan and doing the research to understand it. Because the, the information's there. It's about utilizing it and taking action and having a plan yeah so we true. can we can proactively go after anything it's i i put a lot of effort into resting and relaxing mm-hmm. I, I i make it very efficient one of the things that i've uh, started doing lately is uh switching all of the lights in the evening to red because the it is the blue part uh, part of the wavelength of the light that keeps the serotonin uh, away. Hmm. I've the blue light. Yes, yeah. the blue light spectrum of the full light. So the only way to turn off the blue light completely is just to switch all of the lights purely to red. Do so you have like and red bulbs in your house? Yes, yeah, I do. Cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, it's so much easier. Just I go to bed, my head touches the pillow, and I'm out. You're done. I'm just, again proactively even resting. I'm proactively when I'm uh, like you said, you're on a treadmill. You look at some uh, educational video. When I eat. I pull up whatever it is that I'm trying to research at that moment and let somebody on YouTube tell me all about it. Yep. Small business marketing has been my focus recently. And while I'm eating, I can watch somebody you know, talk about that instead of, again, not trying to talk down to somebody, but conversations rarely stay go towards something exciting like this when somebody asks me what's the favorite TV show that I've right. binge watched recently right. and I'm like oh god that I'm not resting I'm not learning I'm not I can't be enjoying that at all that does not sound like fun at all you yeah. know I'd love I love a good way to wind down also but that's not it mm-hmm. that's not it it still has to have something proactive something functional something that gets me closer to the goal another episode of whatever's popular on netflix right now is not helping me do anything right it's it's too interesting to fall asleep to but it's not good enough for me to focus on i i don't get it mm-hmm. i don't get it um I don't know. I just really, there's few things that I like. There's few things that I enjoy. They are all about self. They're all about self-improvement. So whether it is my uh, stoic way of thinking emotionally or whether it is uh, wonderful date ideas, whether it, it doesn't have to be about business. Right. But why am I better off? Well, how is this a good use of time? Yep, that's true, man. I think every now and again, if you are constantly productive and proactive and it, it does unwind you to watch a movie or yeah. watch an hour of an episode of a show, not not the end of the world. You have to you have to find what works for you. But if you're constantly watching Netflix, you're you're not being productive, you're not being proactive in your approach, then I I do think you've got to reassess what it is that you're doing. And yeah. And that's that's the point. You got to have a balance in your life because there's only every one of us have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Now, there's ways to outsource your time, there's ways to be more efficient and effective with our time, but ultimately it's but there's only what? so much time you have. And again, I forgot what 
book was this or is it just you know general knowledge at this point but combining some activities so for example if you really need to know what happens to the dragons recently i'm spitballing at her right Mm -hmm. now i have no idea what i'm talking about (laughs) but jump on the treadmill jump on a treadmill you know plug in your headphones watch that episode but if you are improving your health if you're right. sitting on a treadmill if you're sitting on a stationary bike uh elliptical or anything else like that let yourself you know wind down mentally but improve yourself physically right if you're if you really need to catch up on the latest season or something like that combine it with another thing listen yeah. to your headphones and clean the house you yeah. know it's like do something yep. that is still a good use of time if you go to the bathroom for 10 minutes Go watch a little snippet of something mindless if, mindless if you want to. I mean, there's there's ways you can incorporate those things into your life, but it's when those things become a distraction yes. and not an outlet. Yes. That is, that's the big principle there. So yeah. it, It's not serving any function to spend an entire Sunday afternoon in front of TV. Yeah. You know, I don't... Unless you have been so hardcore at it, that you just you need a break because sometimes that's we a do. Function. That's we, a function. We, we do need that a break. That is a function. That is active rest. That is recharging your batteries to be able to. So, so schedule it. Yeah. Right. Sunday afternoon. You know what? Everything. Watch is, some football. I'm gonna take it easy. I'm not gonna feel calls. Also different. Football is something that improves your social connections. Football mm-hmm. is something great. I I don't recommend sitting at home watching it by yourself or annoying your you know significant other because you want to watch football. But make it a thing. Make it a social event because those are. Super important for us. Again, they build out connections. They expand your network. They um, just make you feel good to be around other people. If you're doing anything that is not actively f- improving you at a moment, do it with other people. Yep, I'm I'm, I'm with that. I, I do think if you've been so social all week long and you just want a Sunday to relax for yourself for a moment and watch some football. And, and I'm such an extrovert. I would, if see, I have people, to be by myself, I'm going to be by myself on a bike at a path. Well, like, see, that's the thing. They're, they're, everybody has different things that works for them. And that's where it's so important to identify what works for you as an individual. Because what something like for me, there, there are times. There was the other night. I think it was Saturday night. I watched a little, like last Saturday night. I stayed home. I watched Florida State play football on my phone, on my couch alone. And it was really, really nice, dude. Like, I didn't want to be out. I didn't want to be social in that moment because I'm constantly, uh, my my duties and and what I do, I'm constantly communicating. So every now and again, rare, rare, that's the only time I've watched football by myself in probably a year or two years. But in that, it's funny that that was the example that was used because in that moment, that's what I needed to get my batteries recharged and I just wanted a little bit of a break. I didn't really feel like being out and socializing with friends or random people at, at a venue. Plus, I'm not drinking. It's like I didn't really want to be at a bar. So you, everybody has to look at what works best for them as individuals. But it, you made great points that if you can find a way to enhance your activities and enhance your life with things that maybe are mindless at the same time, it's that's the point is to maximize your time and to maximize the results that you want to attain if you know what results you want and that's where i think a lot of people fall short is they don't know what results they want the biggest result but they have no idea where to where to get there like oh i want to be rich okay well how what do you want to do to get there this is a point where we're gonna respect each other's differences for sure i don't own a tv yep i i I watch on my phone i'm not very you know proud of it and go around you know it's like showing it uh, off or anything else like that I just don't have a desire to own a TV the only piece of furniture besides my uh, bed in my house is this couch that my ex-girlfriend left when uh, she moved we broke up and she moved out of town so her Ikea couch is still in my living room Mm -hmm. she might come in and pick it up one day I'll replace it with a hammock (laughs) that's it so I my TV is not I don't have a plug for it. So I watch it on my phone. I don't ever watch TV at my house. Either. Like I have a TV, it's not I don't have a plug. Like, my I don't dream watch it. my dream is van life or tiny home or something like yeah. that. I need a shower and a bed, and I want to get out of there. Yep. Not even shower. I'll shower at the gym. Like I don't. <laughs> I, don't care. I just don't want to be at home. It's so I I I recharge by being out and around people. Yeah. Like I recharge by 
going to a bar or a park or a market or anything anywhere. That's cool. I would I would I would love to live like in the middle of downtown in a very very tiny apartment and just sleep at it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. Like, the, that's, that's my dream. I think life. the Carlton or Eleven East. I have a friend who the, lives there. They're they're small, like three hundred square feet. I have a friend and she absolutely loves it. Yeah, they're cool. They're actually kind of kind of a cool old building. It's like an old hotel, mm-hmm. and you walk in. I think it's Eleven East. Is what yeah. Eleven East Forsyth. She'll drive to work, and uh, besides driving to work and back, she spends um, anywhere that she goes around downtown. She's using one of those electric scooters. So yeah. anytime if you see a. Uh, if you see this six foot three blonde <laughs> zooming <laughs> on a little electric scooter downtown, that's that's Jacksonville. A yeah. That's cool. Yeah, she'll she'll go to games and events and everywhere. Like anywhere I see her around town, she showed up on a scooter. It was there. It's super convenient to her, and she's living that like downtown city life. That's cool. Yep, loving it. That is cool. Well, we're hitting a, a two hour mark. I can't believe we sat here for that long. It's been two hours. Wow. The, the last podcast went two hours, too, and that's the only other one that's gone this far. I think I've had one that went like an hour and a half. Nice. But, yeah, this has been good. So good I want to – For sure. I think I hope that you guys found a lot of value in, in all the different segues that we've gone through here. And there's there's so much more to all this. That's the, that's the key. That's why I have different guests on and so that you all can see some of the same principles and some of the varying principles – and, and that's what my goal here with season one is, is to interview entrepreneurs in all different industries so that you all as an audience can understand some of the common themes and also get an idea of different business opportunities and how you might be able to connect with some of these individuals because now's the time I'm going to kind of plug you in as a resource. So would you be open-minded if someone in the country wanted to open their own axe-throwing business and you, could you give them advice or any in, insight in any capacity? I have formerly traveled, um, and this is usually with larger companies when, for example, an indoor go-kart place wants to add some axe throwing, I would uh, go there as a consultant. Cool. And that was, you know, formal thing that I did. But anybody who's listening to the podcast, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to share some things that I know, or maybe we can find out some new things together. Cool. But anything from how to train your coaches to do it, what kind of wood to use for targets, where to reach out for insurance, what kind of axes are better, what to do with the customer process of as they're coming in and you know how how they're going through your venue and what happens in that. Any questions that people have, we do it all the time. A few of the resources where I've learned from are literally uh, uh, axe throwing venue owner pages on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And there's about three or four, one or two of them are very, very active. Nice. A lot of people are asking a lot of questions, but there's also a way to search through the tread, mm-hmm. thread and uh, check out the question that have already been asked. Gotcha. Probably anything that in, with any industry, anything That's so that smart. you're struggling with, and if somebody else has been struggling with it. This is a really good resource to go in and see what's been asked, and then all the other people that have had you know, all of the answers to yeah. it too. Yeah, Facebook it's groups really, is a really good, very, good, very good way to connect with different people because it's niche specific. You can get in there. There's mastermind groups for all sorts of stuff. Yes. So that's a good plug too. So the, your information will be on the podcast, yep. on the website, on whatsrealinbusiness.com. Your profile will be on there with, with all your hyperlinks for your business, your contact information so people can find you there. And then also if you are in Jacksonville, Florida, then you've got to go into Murray Hill and you've got to go visit Axe Champs directly and go have a good time at the facility because it's really, really fun. Yeah, I had a blast. And then I'd be happy to tell you what else to do after that because we went, had a really good Mediterranean food. Oh, it was so great. Midnight. The Casbah. Yeah, oh, just so down good. the street. There's, you know, an ice cream shop that does specialty things across the street. There's a juice bar to our left. There's a hidden German garden to our right. I love, love, love telling people. It's like, okay, you think this is fun? You're just getting your evening started. Let me tell you yep. what else to do so to make it a full experience, yep. not to make it just one event. I want you... Again, being able to be in your customer's shoes and saying, hey, nobody wants to go axe throwing. They want to have a good evening Mm -hmm. with friends and loved ones, and they want to have a few different things. And I'm happy to 
recommend other things. I'm happy. We work to uh, another thing to add on my social media. What I've noticed a lot every time I'm cross promoting with somebody else, both of us are getting a lot more traction than anybody else. So yep. another little nugget, find a partnership in your yes. area. Find, you know, somebody that you can kind of learn from and work with. So true. Our entire neighborhood uh, merchants association is wonderful. Nice. It's, we're doing a Halloween event uh, for kids week before the actual Halloween, just so we can take up the entire space on a road, block out, make it a big block party, and just create an event for the neighborhood. It was all done for the neighborhood mm-hmm. by the Merchants Association. For the community. Yep. And then it's all, it all comes full circle. It's going to yep. benefit all of you. It's going to benefit the community. That's that's how it's supposed to be. Absolutely. That's super cool. Getting so, things done. Yep. Well, I'm excited to continuously see your success. Absolutely. I'm excited to hang out more. Likewise. To come back up there and to bounce business ideas off each other. And I, I definitely... Definitely want to continue these conversations Same. off off the camera at this point. Cause Hope you got some value out of that. I definitely had fun. Yeah, I did too. I appreciate you so much for coming in and for sticking to the appointment with me today and for Thanks. coming in and for, for sharing your story and for just being a really, really cool dude. So I appreciate Likewise. you again, man. Okay. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all so much for all your time hanging out with us. And until next time, everyone, take care.